All right, we're going to look at some more transducers and the way those transducers actually interface with your audiometer. So if you're standing inside of your booth, one of the things you're going to want to look at here is uh, often a plate that's near the window of the booth, not always, uh, but in many cases you'll find it near the window. And what you see is we've got some things plugged in here, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this is where our different transducers are plugged in. And and then uh, there's actually another set uh, of similar setup on the other side of the wall where the audiometer will be plugged in. So for instance, if you look at numbers one and two, they're actually the, the insert uh, headphones that I'm holding in my hand. So when you press insert on the audio, audiometer itself, you'll be uh, routing signals through to these insert earphones. So it's very, very critical that you have this set up as it should be. Uh, first of all, to know where your signals are being routed, and then of course to be certain that the calibration of those signals is appropriate. So in this case, uh, if you come back to the panel here, we've got insert earphones, and then this one I know because of, of the style of the cord, this is my bone conduction vibrator, and then these two are left and right super oral headphones. You see there's still some room left where more things could be plugged in. Um, you'll need to take a look in your own booth and at your own equipment to see what's available and what options are in your booth. Um, for instance, you might have uh, ultra high frequency uh, headphones that are in your booth um, that would be not present in this case. So these can be easily pulled out. Um, and so one of the things you want to think about is as patients enter and exit the booth, uh, particularly children or people with mobility issues, or if you're moving around very quickly, you may actually knock one of these partially out, in which case the signal will probably either be absent or maybe intermittent. And so where you want to be careful here is, uh, especially if it's a patient where you're, you suspect that their hearing is uh, not not very impaired um, and you're driving up your audiometer and you're seeing you're going to 50, 60, 70, all the way up to 100 dB, you actually might want to question, is it my equipment and not the patient? And just double check that things are plugged in as they should be. It can be very jarring for a patient to receive a high intensity signal that just pops in due to uh, an intermittent situation. All right, let's take a look at the anatomy of um, the inserts here. So I'll set them on the table. Um, you're looking at right. So again, right is red. Keep your R's together. Uh, left is blue. And these are plugged into the wall, connected to the audiometer. What you're looking at with the box here, this is going to be the actual speaker portion. If you flip it over, you see there's some Velcro and a clip so that you can clip these to the patient. You do want to make sure that these are secured to the patient. It's surprising how much they weigh and how much they can pull. And what you don't want to have happen is uh, insert earphones that are in the patient's ear and then suddenly they'll usually pop out quite quickly if uh, the weight of this speaker is allowed to kind of work its magic. Um, you'll see the it, this speaker has a plug to it right here. It's a great thing to check um, just to make sure that the speakers are plugged in as they should be. Then you have a tube. So the signal is going to be coming down this plastic tube and you'll feel it. Um, it's, it's a relatively soft tube. It has a little bit of stretch to it. You do want to check these tubes regularly. Um, they can crack and uh, they'll uh, again affect the, the calibrated signal that's being delivered through them. On the end of the tube, you have, I'm going to pull this ear tip off, but you have a small plastic tip. Uh, one thing I always advise students is be careful. Um, you can pull this whole thing out and throw it away with the ear tip, but then that, that's not what you want to do. Uh, this plastic tip is actually designed to remain in place and intact so that what you do is connect uh, the ear tip 
to this little plug here. So the ear tip is a foam ear tip. It can be rolled. I'm just rolling it between the thumb and index finger here. You would roll it up uh, to get it all the way into a patient's ear canal and then as you've seen in one of our other videos usually we've got uh, this end uh, of this ear, ear uh, plug um, that's right kind of level with the canal opening so it's a relatively deep insertion so I'm going to connect this here and what you want to make sure is that the foam tip and its small tube is completely connected uh, to the, the interface here for the soft tube and then you would roll it up you would get it nice and firmly uh, wrapped down there and then pull back on your patient's ear and uh, get this inserted you do want to monitor the patient make sure that they're comfortable and you also are well advised to do otoscopy before inserting these uh, to make certain especially for cerumen uh, that you don't drive more cerumen down in deeper into the ear canal.